Okay, so Junior Roberts here again with realjuniorroberts.com. So we're on to question four of the CSEC January 2020 physics pass paper. I've done questions one, two, and three in earlier videos. So I'll place a link in the description and also at the top of this video. So you'll be able to go ahead and check out those videos. So let's go right into question four. So question four says, with the aid of label diagram, state the two laws of refraction, right? So let's scroll on a bit and uh, get a closer look to the... So we are given a space here to indicate uh, using a label diagram and we're given uh, some space down here to state the two laws. So if you can recall, you will, you will remember that refraction, right, has to deal with the changing of direction of light as it moves uh, from one medium to the next. So a typical way in which we observe refraction is by looking at light passing through from air and through a glass uh, object. So if I make a sketch here of uh, a glass object, let us say this is my glass object, right? I will have a normal which will be perpendicular to this uh, glass block. So let me draw my normal perpendicular, right? So again, this is my glass block. Right? This is the normal, I'm just going to call that N right? for my normal. Right? And if I have, let us say, a ray of light that uh, is incidented on this glass, air glass boundary, so I can actually say that this is air. Right? So I have a ray of light that travels from air uh, to, into the glass. Right, so the ray of light will be incident on the air glass boundary right here. So if I draw a ray of light like this, right? Now, once this ray of light hits this boundary here, it will want to continue moving here, right? Now, but because of all the different densities of these two materials, what we'll have is this ray of light. We're, we're assuming that, well, glass naturally will be more optically dense than air so we expect this ray of light to be the direction of it to be changed and it's going to change in such a way that it appears as if it is bending toward the normal so we'll have something looking like this right so this diagram will help us to state the two laws of refraction right so let me just indicate that this is the incident ray incident ray Ray, and this will be the refracted ray, right? So let's say those, those two laws. So the first law of refraction, we can say that the incident ray, the normal, and the refracted ray, ray all lie on the same plane right because what we have here is we have our incident ray we have our refracted ray, refracted ray and we have our normal which is just an imaginary line and they all lie within the same plane or within the surface of this uh, display here right so that's the first law. Then the second law now says that the sine of the angle angle of incident divided by the sine uh, let me say sine sine of the angle of refraction 
is equal to to a constant, right? And we call that constant n, and n is simply the refractive index. Refractive index of the material. So what we're saying mathematically is that uh, sine i, which is the sine of the angle of incidence, divided by the sine of the angle of refraction is equal to a constant, and we'll call that n. Right? So those are our two laws of refraction. Right? So what we're saying is that uh, if we have this incident ray and we measure the angle of this incident ray, let us call this i, right? which is the angle of incidence, and this will be our angle of refraction, r. If we take the sine of this and divide it by the sine of this, so the sine of the angle of incidence divided by the sine of the angle of refraction, we will get a constant known as n, right? Which is the refractive index of this glass material. So let's move on. Now, this question here says, when a diver under the sea shines a beam of light towards the surface of the water, the light does not pass through the water air boundary into the air above, but reflects into the sea. State the name of the phenomenon which occurs and briefly explain why this occurs. So, in this case, what we have, let us say we have, uh, let's say we have, this is the sea, right? And let us say we have a, a flashlight. So, we have a flashlight like this. Right? Let us say this is our flashlight and it, uh, it shines some light. Right? And then there's a beam of light that goes like this, right? No, so this is the C and this is air, right? So instead of the light actually shining here and passing through into the air, what happens is that the ray of light is reflected back into the sea, right? So what we have incidentally happening is a condition known as total internal reflection, right? So so the name of the phenomenon is total internal reflection, right? And this occurs, so we can say that this occurs, occurs when light passing from a more dense, dense, uh, medium to less dense medium medium if the ray or I say if the light I'll say light ray is incidented or strikes the boundary let us say it strikes the boundary at an angle greater, let me get some more space here, at an angle greater than the critical angle, critical angle of the medium, the light will be reflected back into the medium right so this is sort of a, a long explanation in terms of what happens but essentially what happens is that this ray of light it strikes this air well water air boundary at an angle greater than what is known as a critical angle right we call that c it's a specific angle in which if the angle of incidence once the ray is traveling from a more dense to a less dense medium, if the angle at which the ray of light strikes that boundary is greater than that critical angle C, right? What will happen is that we will have a condition known as total internal reflection in which the ray of light it will not pass through the mediums or pass through the boundary, but what will happen is that it will be reflected back into the more dense medium. So that's what happens right there. Now, if we go to part B you now, it says no, another diver shines a beam of light into the water to see some fishes as shown in figure below, in figure two, right? So this is figure two. So 
So we're told that given the, that the angle of incidence of the well, given that the index of refraction for the water is 1.33 and the angle of incidence I is 60 degrees, calculate the angle of refraction. All right. So we're going to take into consideration the second law, which we stated up here, right? which says that the sine of the angle of incidence divided by the sine of the angle of refraction is equal to a constant n. So we're going to use that information here to help us here. All right? So we're going to write our formula. So we're going to say that n, which is the angle of n, which is the refractive index, right? which is given here as 1.33, is equal to the sine of the angle of incidence divided by the sine of the angle of refraction. All right? So we're given n, which is the index of refraction or the refractive index. So n is equal to 1.33, and we're told that the angle of incidence, i, is equal to 60 degrees. So we're interested in finding the angle of refraction, so we're going to rearrange this formula, and we will get something looking at the form sine r. So we're going to get that sine r right, is equal to sine of the angle of incidence divided by the refractive index n. Right, so now let's start to simplify this this uh, expression here. Right, so if we go further, we will have that sine r is equal to sine of the angle of incidence, which is sine of sixty, because the angle of incidence is sixty degrees. So we're going to have sine sixty degrees divided by the refractive index, which is one point three three. So we'll have one point three three. Right, so we'll have that sine r now. Is equal to and if we take our calculator and we say sine 60 right that is equal to 0 0.866 so we're gonna have 0 0.866 divided by 1.33 right now we can take the quotient of this so we'll say 0 0.8 Six six divided by one point three three, and we get an answer of zero point six five one. Right. So sine r is equal to zero point six five one. Now we're interested in finding r, so we will have to take the inverse sine of both sides. So if we say sine inverse of of this, we'll have to take sine inverse of this side as well all right so we take the inverse sign to get rid of the sign right here but anything we do to one side we have to do to the other side so when we take sine inverse of sine r we're going to be left with r right and then we can just use our calculator to find the inverse sine of 0 0.651 so if we say shift sine uh 0 0.651 we get an answer of 40 point six two degrees right so it means then that our angle of refraction r would be 40.62 degrees so let's move on so here we're told that an object two centimeter in height is placed 10 centimeters from a convergent lens with a focal length of six centimeters and we're asked to calculate the image distance so in this case we can actually utilize our uh, lens formula right and the lens formula uh, says that We're given the image height and we're given the distance uh, from the we're given the object distance from the lens and we're asked to calculate the image distance from the lens. Right? So we know that U right, which is the object distance is ten centimeters and we're at, and we're also given the focal length f 
and f is 6 centimeters. So we're going to use our formula, right? So we're going to say 1 divided by 6 centimeters is equal to 1 divided by v plus 1 divided by u. And again, u is 10 centimeters. 10 centimeters. All right? So if we start to simplify here, if we take our calculator and we say 1 divided by 6, right, we'll get 0 0.167, right, is equal to 1 divided by V plus 1 divided by U is simply 0 0.1. 1 divided by 10 is simply 0 0.1. So what we can do from here is we can simply uh, rearrange this expression here. So I'm going to take 0 0.1 over to this side. So I will have 0 0.167 minus 0 0.1 and it is equal to 1 divided by v right so 0 0.167 minus 0 0.1 is simply 0 0.067 and that is equal to 1 divided by v now to find v all i can simply do is say 1 divided by v will be equal to 0 0.067 so to find V, I'll just simply uh, reciprocate both sides. So I will have V now is equal to 1 divided by 0 0.067. Right? Because what I did was to just simply reciprocate both sides. So I take the reciprocal of this and I take the reciprocal of this. So taking the reciprocal of a number is just simply uh, dividing 1 by that number. So V then now, in this case, if we use our calculator and say 1 divided by 0 0.067, we get an answer of 14.9. So I'm just going to, I'll say 14.9 centimeters, or I can just simply say approximately, well, approximately 15 centimeters. That will be our object, well, that will be our image distance, approximately 15 centimeters. So let's see if we have anything else that we need to complete. Now, the question here wants us to find the linear magnification. Now, the magnification m uh, of an object, right, is equal to the image distance over the object distance, right? So it's simply v divided by u right so m is equal to v divided by u now we just worked out v and we were given u initially in the question so we're going to say that m is equal to 15 centimeters which is the image distance divided by the object distance which is 10 centimeters right so that's 15 divided by 10 centimeters and our Magnification then now, because if we divide 10 by 15, we'll get 1.5. And since it's magnification, there's no units, so our magnification will just simply be 1.5. Right? And that will be all there is for this question. So, again, this is Junior Roberts with realjuniorroberts.com. If there was any questions in this video, or anything in this video that you... Uh, it was not so clear to you please post it below in comments and i'll do my best to clear up any misconceptions for you like this video if it was helpful click subscribe and the bell notification so you'll never miss any of these videos share this if others will benefit and thank you for watching